If you're a business selling to a local audience, appearing in the top three spots of the Google map listings can get you a whole lot of customers. It's actually the best place to be on a search results page. But with lots of competition that's only getting stiffer, you're probably wondering what can you focus more on to rank higher than your competitors. Today, I'm gonna to share the biggest needle movers and difference makers that'll affect your Google Maps ranking in 2020. And also, you'll get tips that you can use as your strategy to get more exposure compared to your competition. So if you focus on what I talk about in this video, you're gonna get the most results for the least effort. So the first ranking factor is claiming your Google My Business listing. So. This is a prerequisite, you know, having that listing is essential if you wanna rank in Google Maps. And to do so, the first thing you need to do is just to claim that listing. So if there's no listing yet, you can start setting it up and I've got the video to teach you exactly how to do it. Just click right up here if you haven't done it yet. Okay, so why is it so important and why should you start with your listing? You know, it's simple. Claiming your profile allows you to control the information that Google displays. And if you don't claim your listing, Google will try to provide the best information about your business as far as they can, which isn't always correct. So by claiming your Google My Business profile, you can verify and edit all the information about your business so it shows up the way you want it to. It also lets you get reviews from customers and to show up in those near me searches. Just make sure that you provide as much information about your business as possible and that's because the more complete your profile is, the higher your chance to show up in that higher position, since this is just a ranking signal to Google. Add stuff like images, your website link, your operating hours, your phone number, and everything else that you can fill out there. All right, the next ranking factor is what we call domain authority. So this is just an unofficial search engine ranking score that just can basically predict how well a website can rank in searches. And there are a lot of factors that can improve a site's domain authority, including the number of backlinks you have pointing to your site, how old your site is, you know, the age of it, and how good and thorough your content is. Also being search engine friendly and social signals. Now the next ranking factor that we're gonna talk about goes side by side with domain authority and this is link building. Now there are two factors that are important to remember here. First is the number of links pointing to your page. In other words, Google's ranking algorithm takes into account the number of websites and pages that link to your site. You know, then there's a really strong tie between the number of backlinks and how well a site ranks in organic listings, as well as in the map pack. So it's really important for both. But I do need to say backlinks are not treated equally and quality usually outplays quantity every time. So you actually need to really strive for getting backlinks from quality and relevant websites rather than just chasing big numbers. You know, a link will do you much more good if it's from a website that's in the same or a related niche to your own business. Google just considers those kinds of links to make sense and gives them some extra context as to what your website is about. So having just a couple of backlinks from really relevant websites or pages that are in the same niche as you or are topically relevant to your business may do you much more good than a ton of links from less relevant or spammy websites. Okay, our next ranking factor is quality and consistent citations. So what the heck is a citation, right? A citation is any mention of your business name, address, and phone number, otherwise known as your NAP. And Google uses citations to validate your business location. The more citations your business has, the better you do. So how do you get them? You know, you can check uh, to find website directories related to your industry uh, and make sure that your NAP is accurate, up to date, and 100% consistent across all of them. It also needs to be consistent across your website and your Google My Business listing too. You know, the details definitely matter here. For example, if your business is listed on Google Maps as Larry's Smog Check, 4455 North Shore Road, Fulton, California, 95439, but then on some of your listings, it appears as Road or gets shortened to N, period shore, or even removes the apostrophe in Larry's, it could actually confuse Google, and that's gonna lower your chances to rank in the map three pack, silly as it sounds. So make sure that your citations are correct and consistent across all of them. All right, next we have reviews. So when's the last time you went to a restaurant or 
hired a business, worked with a business without seeing some good reviews first. If you're like me, I will go out on a limb and say it's been a while. You know, reviews make any business more trustworthy. So Google likes to rank businesses with lots of good reviews higher on Google Maps, go figure. Now to be completely honest with you, is this the biggest ranking signal? No, it isn't, but it's a key difference maker if all else is equal. And let's even take rankings out of it for a second. Let's say you were to show up in the map listings um, above two other competitors, you know, even if you're on top of them and they have better or more reviews than you, you're probably still gonna lose business to them. So reviews are important all the way around. Okay, so begs the question, how do you get all these positive five-star reviews? Well, I made a video all about it, so click right up here to get all my best tips on that. Now, what happens after you get that review is almost just as important as the review itself, and that's your response. You know, you want people to see just how human your business is, so be polite and write them back. This is gonna show people, you know, future customers, how responsive and on the ball you are as a business. But when you get a bad review, which happens, you also wanna to respond to it, but be very careful in how you handle it. You know, I actually recommend just doing the thing where you walk away from it for a day so you don't end up saying something uh, in, the, in the heat of the moment that could be damaging to your business. Yeah? Well, I had sex with your wife. <laughs> and if it's a real complaint of some kind, you wanna apologize, accept responsibility, and offer to make it right publicly, even if it wasn't your fault. You might have to suck it up, you know, but if it's a fake review left by a competitor or even just an online troll, I would just reply saying something like, you know, we love to make sure our customers are always happy with our service, but we have no record of working with you. Can you give me a few more details, please? It's never a good idea to get defensive or aggressive in your reply. Um, a bad review gives you the chance to actually demonstrate your, your professionalism, which helps you mitigate any potential damage. All right, next we have prominence and popularity. So Google usually likes to reward businesses that are well-known, liked, and just all around reputable brands. So to put it simply, Google wants to provide the most reliable information to its searchers, and they're always gonna try to promote actual brands whenever they can, as opposed to, you know, small businesses that they might perceive as fly-by-night or unreputable in any way. So it usually pulls results that have plenty of positive mm -hmm. feedback, because they seem to be the most trusted businesses out there. Now, gathering more reviews and ratings will always increase a business's likelihood of showing up at the top of the map search, but this doesn't mean that Google doesn't like small businesses, it just doesn't always trust them right away. That's why it'll be up to the business owners and their marketing team, if you have one, to build up your company's reputation and make it more prominent in the surrounding community. Establishing prominence can be done in a lot of ways from blog write-ups about your business to getting those reviews to just brand mentions on social media. Just try to cover as many bases as possible so Google can see just how widely recognized your business is. All right, next we have embedded Google Maps. Now, this is another way to rank higher on Google Maps and it's 100% in your control. Embedding a Google map on your site is just another way to tell Google that your business is located where your listing says it is. So just be sure you use the same address you have on your Google My Business listing. And if you use the Elementor plugin like I recommend to build out your site, they have a built-in Google Maps drag and drop to make it really easy to put it on your site. But even if you don't use Elementor, they make it really easy just to uh, copy the embed code and put it right on your site. Okay, so the next ranking factor is your website itself and how optimized it is for local search. You know, you know by now that your website is definitely your most powerful marketing tool, so Google will rely on the information it finds on your website to figure out how relevant your business is to your niche. So when optimizing your Google My Business listing, one of the sections you fill in is your website address. And when you do that, your website then acts as a landing page for your Google My Business listing. And this website's gonna have a direct impact on your ranking power. So when it comes to optimizing your website for local search, here's what you need to look for specifically. Uh, proper title tags. So the title tag, also known as the H1, is the most important piece of content on any page. It tells Google a lot and should ideally include your business name, metro area or city name, and your business category. Next is the page description. So this is your opportunity to tell Google even more 
about your products or services. Your description should reinforce your business category, location, and name. Finally, and probably equally as important as the other two is your NAP, remember? Uh, remember that's your name, address, and phone number. And I suggest putting your NAP in the footer of your website. Again, it should be 100% the same as it appears in your Google My Business listing itself. All right, next we have proximity. So the single biggest factor that impacts where and when you show up in the maps is still proximity. You know, in other words, how close are you physically to the person searching. And this can be frustrating, especially when you're a business that doesn't need to be close to your customers, like if you travel out to them or if you just work remotely from home. And hopefully Google's gonna start to catch up and differentiate between different types of businesses and focus more on other factors for certain niches. But for now, unfortunately, it generally helps to be in the center of town or at least very close to the most people searching. Now, one of the biggest questions I get all the time is what do you do if you are one of these types of businesses with a more of a service area that you cover or if you work from home? Do you need to list out a physical address at all? Well, I made this video right here to answer that question once and for all, so just click right over here to get your answer.